Congratulations, you bought yourself an EV, or you're thinking about doing it, and now you ask, how do I charge it? Well, we're going to take a look at installing home chargers, and we are reporting today on some interesting details. Stay tuned. My name is Martin Lee, and if you like this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. Okay, let's get money out of the way first. Unfortunately, there is no one single answer here. It depends on what you need and where you're watching this from around the world. For example, I'm in the UK, so we get a government grant to cover a large part of installing electric vehicle charging, or as it's technically known, EVSE, on the side of my house at home. Now, some dealers and some manufacturers will promise to install a charge point for free with a purchase of one of their electric vehicles. And the cost also varies depending on how much cabling your installer needs to run. Maybe your fuse board will need some sort of upgrading before your charger can be installed. Best to check out your local government level of subsidies, speak to a local trusted installer, or even the car company that you're buying the EV from to get advice. Okay, let's talk about charging speeds at home. Since I guess you're watching this because you've bought an EV or thinking of doing that, you've decided not to use a domestic plug to charge your car at home. And that's a very sensible thing to do for many electrical safety reasons, but also it's very slow. Look, here in the UK, it would take two full days of charging a Tesla Model S to get a full battery. Most people are going to get a dedicated charge point installed. And like I say, you'll see this called EVSE, or more commonly just known as an electric vehicle charger. Maybe you'll put it on the wall outside your house. Maybe it'll be inside your garage. Either way, you will be getting a faster charge than plugging in on a domestic plug socket. Most houses, for instance, Again, I'll just give the example of where I am. We use a single phase electricity supply. That means typically it's gonna be a 32 amp or seven kilowatt circuit, and I'll be charging my car with seven units of energy every hour. Oh, what does that mean, you might be asking? Well, if I plug in my car, it's a Renault Zoe, that seven kilowatt charge in one hour will give me 35 to 40 kilometers of range, or about three times faster than when I first bought the car and for a little while used a domestic plug. It was really slow to charge that way. And of course, there are some regions in the world where domestic buildings routinely have three-phase electricity. Now that substantially increases the power that your house can draw from the grid and your car charger can draw much more also. Now, bear in mind, the car you own may not actually be able to take all of that power. So go back away and the old Nissan Leafs could only draw 3.6 kilowatts if you were plugging them into an AC circuit. Most newer cars can take around 7 to 11 kilowatts on AC, which is what you use at home. And sorry to mention my car again, but smug face, it can charge at 22 kilowatts AC, much like the Audi e-tron, though my car's a lot cheaper. Would it be possible to get a DC charger at home? That way you could dump in a lot more power and only plug in for half an hour maybe. Well, in theory, yes, you could. Anything's possible. But logistics and cost would be astronomical. So we'll stick with AC charging for now. You'll see the words tethered and untethered banded around when you install a home charger and you need to decide which one you want. And we're not talking about some sort of fishing terminology, we're talking about the cable that plugs into your car. You can choose a tethered cable, so the end that plugs into the charging unit is always connected, or an untethered unit. That allows you to remove the cable entirely from the charging unit, pop it in the back of your car, and take it wherever you go. There are pros and cons to each. It's handy to have the cable there permanently just to plug in quickly when you get home. The downside is that if you change car, say, from an older to a newer Nissan Leaf, then you may have to get a new unit because the plugs are different. Well, having said that, most newer cars are standardizing. For example, here in the UK, the Type 2 connection is incredibly common. Even if friends or family come visit, you'll probably be covered. Also, we like to take our cable wherever 
we go. And if the cable was damaged, for instance, it's cheaper to replace that than the entire unit. But again, you make your own mind up and you do your own research. When it comes to safety, a good registered installer will get you covered. Regulations are different around the world to exact building specifications and rules for fitting electrical equipment. So I can't go into all of those on this show right now, but there's no need to worry. If you are choosing a trusted brand of EVSE or car charger and a trustworthy installer, go with the good stuff. As they say, it's always better to pay a little bit more and get good stuff. But let's talk about the location, a bit like buying property. Location, location, location. Isn't that what they say? Well, take a few minutes when you start to think about where you want your wall box installed. Where would it be on your property? Now, it may be cheaper to have that unit fitted closer to a supply point that cuts down on material and possibly labor costs as well. But is it worth it in the long term? A lot of people like the convenience of driving an electric car. So you come home, plug in in less than five seconds and you're in the house. There's no point having to pop in to get the keys from the kitchen table to move other cars around and maybe rearrange the garden furniture every time you want to charge. Pick the spot that's convenient and go for it. Now let's move on to talk about what's happening in the future. And if I knew that exactly, of course, I'd be a rich man, but let's dream anyway. There are some pretty interesting apps coming out that treat car charging a bit like Airbnb. You can find someone with a charger near your workplace, near your apartment if you don't have off-road parking, or maybe even when you are going on a long road trip and you can use their charger. Trials are ongoing around the world for vehicle to something. You'll hear it called vehicle to home, vehicle to grid, vehicle to load. You see it often called vehicle to X because it just means taking energy out of your vehicle and using it for something else. Now we've made a video in more detail already. It means your charger can take power from your car and put power in. And it's an ingenious idea because the applications of it are so exciting. For example, you could charge up your car during the day using solar on your roof. Then at night, when the sun isn't shining, you could run your house from your car. In theory, you could run your house and do your driving for free. Or maybe you could buy electricity at night when it's cheap. And then when the electricity grid is at a higher demand and often the price is higher, you could sell it back to the grid at a higher price if you don't need it. We could make a whole series about this, so we'll leave it there for now. Well, all of these ideas and possibilities and opportunities are only available if you do have a properly installed unit to charge your EV at home or at work, wherever you are. So thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully it got you thinking. It's a few pointers. We wanted to make this video, but it's so hard when there's so many places around the world that have different standards and equipment, but hopefully it's set your mind ticking now and we can continue the conversation in the comments below. We read and respond to all of the comments on our channel and we'd love to hear from you. So let us know your experiences or what you're thinking or any questions down there, any charges or technology that you're looking forward to, what charge speeds you use and how much you're paying to charge. As a reminder, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we'll know to make more just like it and we'll see you on the next one.